So chapter four um, is titled uh, the process of planning. The one um, thing to remember here is that um, the process is as important as the plan. But at the end of this chapter, you will be able to identify the specific um, public participation activities for each stage in the decision-making process and put them in a timeline um, together, as we have um, done in the previous um, chapter. These activities um, and then the schedule are documented in a public participation plan. Process planning encompasses these um, steps, which are shown in figure 4.1, and um, in the figure, actually, therefore, or they're presented in the form of questions to be answered. Um, like one is to decide who needs to be in the planning team. So this could be people in your own department or within um, the city that you work for. You might also have a consultant identify stakeholders and identify potential issues of concern. So find organizations in your community that might be uh, non-profits, community groups, um, businesses that might be interested in helping you. So learn about what matters to them the most as they will be your partners um, in this process and this um, endeavor. Then assess the probable level of controversy. So try to figure out in advance um, if the issue needs a negotiation or it needs more of a collaborative process or a consensus um, building. Um, then define public participation objectives. What are you really trying to accomplish? Is it informing the public? Is it um, consulting in the project? Um, just use the International Association of, of Public Participation levels of community engagement um, in order to decide what is the level of public participation. Then analyze the exchange of information that must take um, place uh, in order to achieve the public participation objectives that you already have established. And always remember that the public needs to be informed in order to be able to give you good feedback. So part of any public participation process, it will include inform before um, you will actually uh, try to involve the public or collaborate um, with the public or consult. Um, the public. Uh, this is how they can give you actually good feedback. Then identify special considerations that could affect the selection of um, public participatory techniques. We have uh, one clear example is like COVID-19 um, and how the participation needed to be um, more online or have like different considerations that, that before maybe even give more time to uh, be able to collect um, those surveys because not enough people are um, going out the streets and you still need to do um, intercept interviews. Whatever it is, um, you need to figure out is there something happening right now that um, it changes um, the, my public participation plan or the strategies and techniques that I uh, had uh, thought that I could um, use. Um, then select um, public participation techniques. So are you going to do surveys? Is it like focus groups? Is it like um, hearings, um, workshops, and so on? And many times it's like multiple um, ways of providing um, feedback, including um, just accepting uh, comments um, and people send you letters, emails, and so on. Um, and then at the end, you need to prepare a public participation plan. So we will discuss each one of these um, steps. Uh, who needs to be in the planning team? So there are basically two types of very important people that need to be in your planning team. That is um, your core working group, people that will actually be doing the work. So that might be the project manager. Um, it might be people that um, help you with um, public relations or like putting things in, in the um, website of, of your department, um, communicating to the public, so maybe someone that does like the public relations, it could be the consultant. Um, so these are the people that do the work. And then you have other set of people that are the people that are not doing the work, but they're the ones that will help you to implement the project. So that might be the planning director that oversees um, that particular um, division. Um, there might be other divisions um, within the city that you need to um, consult and, and tell them what, what you're doing because their support it will be absolutely key in order to like implement the plan that includes people in city council, people in the planning commission or just like different 
um, commissions um, in the city, the mayor, and, and so on. So people can come and go do a, during like a public participation process because most likely, if, for example, for a master plan, it might take um, three years from the beginning of the project to the uh, end, and then that's not really the end, that's the implementation um, process as well. Um, but some people are going to come and go just like how they're needed, but most likely you will keep the core team um, and the people that help you, at least through the public participation um, process, again, being the project manager, uh, public relations um, specialist, maybe a staff planner, and um, the, uh, the consultant. And these people will be like involved throughout the whole um, process. So, and they're the ones who gain the most knowledge um, about which decisions were made and when and, and why. So they really need to keep um, track of, of that. So in general stakeholders, um, they have uh, an interest in the project and they should be involved at the very early stages of the um, process or as soon as possible, even before you actually engage the, the public. Um, so as we mentioned, the stakeholders are people that are affected by the particular decision that you are trying to make. Maybe it's a policy, a regulation, maybe it's a zoning change. So they are directly affected and that's why they care. Or they, this is part of like what they do um, in their everyday um, life. Maybe they work um, with a housing organization and um, you are creating the, the housing plan. Um, or maybe they're builders, so this is like part of the regular job. Um, this is why they want to be involved, because they really care and they have a big interest in what you um, have to do. And this could be people in academia, it could be people that are interested because of um, political reasons. Um, so there's like many different ways or many reasons of why they might be um, interested. So the important thing is that you want to include them because they are, um, or they can be your partners and they can really help you with the public participation plan. Um, they can help you because they have connections in the community, they know people, and um, the more um, residents you will be able to connect, the more connections you have with these stakeholders because you might not have those relationships in the community, or with these different kinds of um, groups, but they do. So that's a good reason to like um, partner with them. Um, another reason is because they understand what are the issues. So they um, do this as part of their regular job, or um, maybe if they are affected because they are located in the geographic area where there will be some changes to the uh, zoning uh, text or zoning code. Um, they actually, through their everyday experience or through conversations with neighbors, they will know um, what are some of the concerns that people have in the community. So they have this information and they have um, been part of the community or working with different populations um, for years and they can rely that information um, to you. It's, it's always good to like bring um, a group of like-minded people because um, then the public participation could be really designed um, in a way that is targeted with these like, different populations. But also be, they can help you anticipate what are some of the problems with the um, public participation process or some of the concerns that people have. Uh, maybe you are going to get some pushback from the community, so you can talk about those things with the stakeholders before you actually like start your public participation plan. This is why it's so important to include the stakeholders before you include um, anyone else in this um, process. Of course, outside of like your, as I mentioned, your team and the city departments and the people within your organization. So when you're talking about stakeholders, it will be like, um, a combination of people um, that work in other departments, um, right? And people that are uh, part of the community, businesses, um, nonprofits, and, and, and so on.